everybody. So I've taken you through how I make guitars and where I make guitars. And I thought it might be a cool idea for a change to show you my live touring setup. So as some of you may know, I'm a guitar tech when I'm not doing luthery. And uh, over the years I've built up a nice little toolkit. So I'll take this opportunity to take you through it. Let's have a look. So I guess the biggest kind of most impressive uh, case that I've got is this here vault. This one holds 10 guitars. It's got some LED lighting in it so you can see what you're doing in low light situations. And uh, it's also really handy because this is normally set up next to the stage during a performance. It means that the band can see where they're going a little bit if they've got stairs to negotiate or something like that. I also keep a couple of these ropes handy, um, just loose. And uh, they're cool to just throw around backstage so that people don't trip over and it also is pretty vibey. It creates a cool little atmosphere. So it's quite simple. It's just a standard road case. It has a lid that goes on the top and a thick caster board. This one's running six casters. Um, aluminium and steel hardware and hexagrip plywood. For the top, it's only 9mm plywood, so it's not tremendously thick. But because of the way I built it, it's, um, it's solid, and when the lid's on it, it's really solid. This is okay with things banging into it and, you know, jostling around in the back of a truck or a van, if you've got a really big van. Um, so let me zoom in and I'll show you some of the features. So if we zoom in and take a closer look, all of the guitars are held in really well. The first part of that equation is the foam inserts. These are cut for an electric guitar size and accommodate a range of guitar thicknesses. If zero movement is your goal, you can put a little foam wedge in there or a piece of velvet and hold them tightly in place. The next part of the equation are these neck retention straps, which can be folded out of the way. Quick and easy. That unlocks your guitar so you can get them in and out easily. Another cool feature are these velvet bungees. These are basically like big hair scrunchies with a hook on each end. They're stretchy, so they can fit a variety of guitars. When you've loaded in, and when you take the lid off, you can take all these bungees out because they're really just there for transportation. And that way you can pull your guitars in and out really easily during a performance or really any time at all. Just remember to use these babies here. Both of the sides look the same. They look like this. They've got a no tip sticker on each end and these heavy duty handles. These handles are only to be used for moving the case, they're not for lifting the case. Cases like this live on the floor or up and down ramps. Here's the lid. As you can see, it's pretty enormous. Just for scale, I'm six foot two. So it's a pretty big piece of equipment, but it can be moved by one person. It's got a tour dish here, so you know where it's from and where it goes in the truck. As with all the other sides, it's got these no tip stickers that are so big that even loaders can read them and these handy handles so that I can lift it off by myself. It's just under two meters long, but even so, it's easy enough to move once you unlock the casters. Because in smaller venues, the back is normally the crowd facing surface of the case. I've put a little label here and some warning tape so people know not to put their drinks up there. That brings us to the next couple of parts of the system. Up top we've got the tech bench and down below the drawers case. On larger shows these two cases live together. On smaller shows I'll use the tech bench and put it on a keyboard stand that I keep for it. You'll probably also notice here I've got this Korg rack tuner in the drawers case and I keep that set to strobe. This is my main tuner, it's super dependable, I've been using it for more than 20 years. Got the input there, and the output goes around to these two boss tuners. Top is a TU-8, bottom is a TU-12. Uh, one has a microphone, one's better for six string basses and extended range guitars. They're both accurate to one one hundredth of a semitone. These tuners also read a lot quicker than the Korg does. 
The best thing is they both run on batteries, so if my main tuner goes down, these tuners will remain operational. If there's a power cut, I can still work. If I just put these aside for now, I've also got a gooseneck light here. Pretty essential. It's wired in, or connected at least, to the drawers case. So I can just pull it out. It's a three pin DIN plug, so it's easy to put in and out. And at the end of the show, I can remove it and just pop it in one of these drawers. When I'm working festivals or large shows where I'm not working for the headliner, it's really important to be able to get things out of the way nice and quickly. Let's go and have a look inside this tech bench. My favorite thing about this is it's got a small form factor. So when it's time to pack up at the end of a show, I can just fold it up like this and it turns into a briefcase. This neck rest is cool. It attaches to the clasp here. So once it's connected, if you accidentally bash into it, it's not going anywhere. It's nice and solid. Let's zoom in and we'll take a look inside. It's built quite solid, so it's a lot heavier than it looks. The first feature is this screw dish. I've put a little magnet in there. So when you're working on a guitar during a show and everything's popping off, you're not going to lose your precious screws, even if you have to lift the lid. The lids are just velcroed down. It's quite strong velcro. I've seen other ones that have hardware, but I'm quite happy with this setup. So here's my toy box. First up is the tune bot. Sometimes we're not hired to do just guitars. Sometimes we do stage and sometimes we have to look after drummers as well. Not being a drummer, I find that this thing is invaluable. A good rule of thumb is to always keep your batteries separate when you're not using them. So a tune bot basically clips onto your drums and it allows you to tune them to a pitch. When I'm doing my pre-production, I'll sit down with the drummer and find out what tunings they like for each drum. And I can also set them in the memory. Once I've got their presets, if I'm called back to work for them again, then I know what I'm doing. These things are excellent for in the studio as well, if you need to tune to something different. This section of the case is where I leave everything that I use most often. So at the beginning of a show, I'll pull out all of the things that I'll need on hand. For example, these mic stand pick holders. I don't keep picks in them because they'll just fall out. But once they're connected to a mic stand, they clamp down on the picks and that's what holds them in. So they'll come out and go on the mic stands. I have more of them spare in another compartment. Also, I will always take out the tried and true Panasonic string winder in case of a restringing emergency. I have some emergency supplies in here like super glue, a slide and a capo in case one of the artist's slides or capos goes missing before the show. That's tech code for they took it home and forgot to bring it back. I've got some fretboard protectors there and a Floyd Rose intonation tool as well. Something else I use quite often is this Stumac screwdriver kit. It's really portable and it's got a few specialty bits in it which I don't really have elsewhere. One of the best things about this tool is the rotating end that fits into your palm. So if you're really having to torque something in, having the tool be able to move without taking pieces of your palm off is a really great idea. I'm a big fan of this kit, despite the exorbitant cost. Back here in this secondhand box I found, I've got some metric and imperial Allen keys, specifically for guitar sizes. I've also got this knob puller, <laughs> I find that if I shim under this, I can use that as a knob puller as well sometimes. This one is for tightening toggle switches on Les Pauls and also for output jacks. Scalpel with a safety lid and the other part of my string winder in case I ever decide to go manual. I've got one of those as well and one of these which is an extension that I've never used to be honest. Um, also some guitar specific wrenches. 
So, like I say, this front pocket is for things that I'm most likely to need, most likely to use in the course of a day. As with every single thing about this loadout, it's all completely modular. So, depending on the artist, depending on the tour, you can rearrange it as necessary. So that's compartment one. I've already talked about this neck rest. In this little compartment here, it's where I keep my stickers and magnets. When you're on tour, it's nice to hand these out to new friends and they're sugar free. So that's my little charity bin. This compartment here is for things that I probably want to grab in a hurry without having to lift a lid. So I've got spare picks here that I've collected from various tours, etc. I don't have a use for them right now. They're just in case they're needed. This little bad boy is a string stretcher. You've probably seen videos about them. I've got various pens and markers in here and my drum key. That's the only one I've ever needed, luckily for me. Like I said before, this is full of pens. I've got black and white markers. This one's a whiteboard marker, which I use on the road case dishes. I've got a Chinagraph pencil here and one of these long nibbed pens, long nibbed markers, which is really handy for when you're marking around things for when you're making road cases. There's a pencil sharpener and an eraser, some spare knife blades, and of course my string trimmers. All right, now I've got to put all my toys back in my box and we can have a look in this second sealed compartment. Most of what I keep in here isn't anything that I need to get at too often, with some exceptions. I've got my GoPro in there, which I'm clearly not using right now. I've got some legs there for it. This is a 2006 PlayStation Portable. It's got one game, Ridge Racer Type 4, that I like to play. I don't have any games on my phone. So this is for boring emergencies. These happen pretty much every day on tour. I've got some fast fret here, just in case anybody wants to use it some more legs. These containers are for keeping picks in. So I've got one for each potential band member, a singer who plays guitar or a bass player and a couple of guitarists. I've got more of these if I need to deploy them, but uh, four takes care of most situations. I've got even more camera legs there, I guess because in case I want to put them here and do a tutorial or something. And finally, a multi-pack of microfiber cloths. I don't know how we ever got by without these before they were invented. Now I've got to work out how all this stuff goes back in here, so we might be in some trouble. We did it. That looks good. Okay, next compartment. Things I use most often here, black and white gaffer tape. I've got some painter's tape along with the cloth that I'm using at the moment. You can't really see it, but there's a little bit of space left there and that's for this tuna case. So at the end of the show, I can unplug the power there and unplug the input. Then everything else tucks away inside its little pouch. There's also a little clip on tuner in there in case one of the artists wants to rehearse or tune up backstage before a show. So all of that zips up and it slips into this little space here. So you can see this case holds quite a lot of stuff. We got some fretboard oil here for dark fretboard woods. This is a low quality isopropyl and this over here is the high quality. I use them for different applications and I've got some lovely fragrant wax for lubricating screw holes. I've been using this same tube of fret polish for about six years now. This stuff is essential. It's Deoxit, which is a contact cleaner for electronics. I also have the largest spray bottle of polish in all of Christendom. Normally when I'm polishing guitars, especially vintage guitars, I'll just use water. In this pouch lives my multimeter and two sets of leads, one with alligator clips and the other one with long probes. 
I've had this same multimeter for about 25 years, still going strong, because I don't leave my leads loose to get hurt in the case. So if you've ever worked a show as a tech before, you know how frustrating it can be trying to talk to front of house, communicate with them during a sound check and the like, without radios if you have to talk through the monitors and microphones. So I always bring a few sets of extra radios, antennae and headsets. I use the same system, but mine is kept separately. It stays with me so it doesn't get packed away into the truck like these ones do. These radios have a lot of cross compatibility with other systems, so yeah, they're really great. I guess you'd call this my everyday carry, so it's basically the biggest bum bag I've ever seen in my life with a couple of things hanging off it. The first being, this is my radio setup. It's the same as the others, but um, I've attached it to this little pouch and I can easily access my on switch, my send switch, when it's behind me, out of the way of any guitars that I'm working on. Clearly a super important consideration. Same thing with this setup, it's on the other side behind me. Black and white marker for marking set lists or gaffer tape. On this side a small multi-tool, uh, it's got pliers on it which comes in handy for when you want to rip out the toenails of the support bands when they're playing over time. We've all seen LED flashlights before, but this one is my favorite for this application because it only turns on and off. It doesn't have a bunch of other modes. To be clear, it does have other modes that you can access through the USB connection and program it, but I just wanted something that turns on and off and that's it. I don't have any need for a tactical strobe at this point in my life, so this simplicity is really appreciated. Inside the bag, I actually have gone full tactical on this one. I use these gloves for loading and unloading of gear, saves your knuckles and fingers. And because they have moisture wicking technology, they help to keep you cooler. This is my headset. They have a noise cancelling function above a certain threshold, so I can hear the sound engineer clearly when I need to hear them. There's also a little zipped area up the back here where I can keep cards and passports and phones and, you know, things that I need to keep safe. Alright, zippity doo, on to the next part. For the drawers case, I'm going to move proceedings up into my house. And we can get comfy. The drawers case powers all of my other cases, so when I'm setting up, I can just plug in my mains power and my tuner, connect the gooseneck, and I'm ready to go. So the tech bench doesn't get knocked off if, you know, people bump into it. I've put these little bungees on one side as well, and that holds it on pretty solidly, so I've got a good stable work area to work from. Time to look into the drawers case. Modularity is the name of the game here. I'll just turn on my little light so we can see. Each tech setup is going to be different and each tech setup is going to be different on each tour. What I use with one band is going to be different than what I'll use for another band and sometimes you'll use different loadouts within the same tour depending on requirements. After doing pre-production with the band you're going to take things out of the setup that the last band may have relied on but that this band simply won't use. So let's see what's in here at the moment. I've got a charger for my drill and impact driver. I'll use an impact driver if I'm touring doing drums as well. There's lots of tape in here because tape has many uses and we go through a lot of it. This is mainly electrical tape, fretboard covering tape and painters tape. I've got an amp power supply here and an endoscope power supply here. You'll see them later in the video. I've got a spare battery for the drill and impact driver and because it goes with the charger, it stays in here. In this pouch lives the power supply for my Panasonic electric screwdriver, which I use as a string winder. Unfortunately, the power supply is enormous but it's something I use on every tour. I keep it in the pouch to keep it safe. Replacement would cost so much money. 
I'm sure I could make a smaller charging dock for it, but it's just one of those things that I've never got around to. I can't speak for other techs, but the majority of my guitars are so badly set up because I spend so much time doing everyone else's, so I never get around to it. There's some radio chargers, a battery tester and some spare button cells. Down here are some more chargers for AAs and 9 volts and AAA batteries too. I've got a rechargeable power brick here and a black pouch full of lots of small format batteries. On every tour you'll always find somebody who's lost their iPhone charging cable so that's a nice spare thing to have as well. Let's put that away. And underneath all that is my little repair kit for when I'm working on Gretsch style hollow body guitars. Rewiring a Gretsch hollow body electric or semi hollow is such a nightmare that it necessitates its very own kit just to make those repairs possible. So that's draw number four. If I'm not anticipating doing any fret work, then I can lose most of those tapes and replace them with spare strings or whatever else I might need for the next job. Welcome to drawer number three. This is obviously the tool drawer. A lot of people might say, why isn't it closer to the top drawer? And that's because it's so heavy. I group all of my tools into these little boxes, compartments, because A, you don't want them all to crash into each other when the case is being transported and potentially to dull uh, sharp surfaces like this one and also because you don't want to create a tipping hazard when the case is being moved especially by roadies who aren't you. It's good for that reason to group your tools into little boxes like this and that way there's less likelihood of the whole thing moving over. This box is so heavy that I can't actually lift it alone just as a comparison, this case is heavier than an Ampeg 8x10 cabinet. So yeah, grouping tools is essential. So let's talk about tools. I've got a set of three Stumac T-handle wrenches here. These are essential for securing some styles of output jacks, tuner nuts and potentiometer nuts. Whenever I have to grab my nuts, I reach for those. I also have a couple of Fender T-handle Allen keys here, specifically sized for fender truss rods. Down the bottom I have some fret dressing and maintenance tools as well. These are invaluable for when somebody accidentally chips a fret, maybe a couple of guitars knocked together or something like that. Having the skills and the equipment to be able to do partial refrets, full refrets or uh, fret dressing on the road just puts you head and shoulders above most of the techs that are out there. Contentious opinion, but most of the techs that are out there actually aren't very good. We've got some screwdrivers in the next box, a little radius gauge. If we go a little deeper, there is a tiny little wrench here. I'm going to be honest, I have no idea what this is for, but what I do know is when I need it, I'll know where to find it. I've got an awl here, actually I've got two. One is for marking on wood and the other is for stabbing tour managers with. When they book you into accommodation and neglect to get you a late checkout. But of course they remember to give the band a late checkout, just not you. So you get woken up in the morning for no reason. So that second awl is for that. And like I said before, a bunch of screwdrivers there with the rotating end caps. I'm just cleaning some glue here off my fret cutters. I glue my frets in with wood glue, so that's why there's a bit of smegma there. Speaking of frets, I've also got my fret tang nippers. Now these are something that you're not going to need on most tours, but on some tours, you might. In the far left box, we've got some wire cutters, some long nose pliers and some grips a little clamp and a Stanley knife. Now this screen was in the middle box so I'll show you what that does. This is my endoscope and I use this to inspect the insides of acoustic guitars and semi hollows. So it consists of two parts, the monitor on the left there and the camera. And you can see it gives you a pretty good color picture 
The monitor is removable, that comes in quite handy, and you can clip it back onto the camera body. Just like me, it's got a very long, flexible shaft, and if I press this button here, you can see it can light up the interior workspace. Underneath that is my Dremel, and that also has a long, flexible shaft. I love them. There's a fret slotting saw there, and up the back is where I keep all of the heaviest stuff for balance. So if I slot that back, right here I've got some fretboard radius blocks. I use this Dremel here to polish frets once I've finished doing all of the fret work. This is a straight edge and then on the other side you can check your fretboard straightness while it's got its frets in. This is a string spacing ruler that you use when you're cutting nuts. This plastic tube holds a sanding beam and that's for sanding frets. I've got two of these, one for 220 and one for 320 grit sandpaper. These plastic boxes hold two different types of analog vernier calipers, so I always like to have analog backups of everything that's important to use. At the very back, I have a couple of aluminium sanding beams. These are handy not only for sanding fretboards, they're also handy to use as a clamping surface because they're so rigid. I've already mentioned these tools in my left hand here. The magnets are just being stored there. If I dig down deep enough past all of these clippers, etc., I've got a fret slot cleaner, which in conjunction with my fret end file there, is another part of my fretting gear. This white plasticky sheet here is Teflon, and I use it all over guitars, so it's really handy to keep some on standby. This is a drill, it's for emergency dental work. I've got a little pouch here of radius gauges. And this is my highly professional plastic bag of nut files. Always empty out the nut file dust before you travel or you'll get pulled up at customs like I did. This is a blade that you can put on your drill press and cut things like binding nice and square. And these are some razor files that I keep in a little plastic container. I've got these Stumac tools that are great for adjusting Gibson style truss rods. I've taken three of my right angle Allen keys out of the set, so they're specifically sized for Floyd Rose tremolos. I found that when I use the smaller disposable style Allen keys that the edges dull over time. That's a cute little double sided hammer. I've got some toothbrushes in there for cleaning metal parts and a tape measure. There's some funky pliers up the front here, da da! And my backup mag light. These little drill bits are from Stumac, they're in very handy sizes and they've got stoppers on them. They're to stop you from drilling too deep or over penetrating your workpiece. So in summation, Draw 3 is all about hand tools. To avoid tipping hazards, draw 2 is the lightest draw so far. This plastic box right here contains my soldering station. We'll get back to that in a minute. These are Dremel attachments for polishing and cutting. I use a lot of them, so I keep a lot handy. This is Eucalyptus Cleaner. G'day mate. It's the magic ingredient for when you have to clean all of the DNA and gross stuff off dark colored fretboards. Have you ever had a guitarist smash his headstock off on tour? I have. Was it a problem? No. Because I've got this stuff weld bond, dries clear, it's my favorite wood glue. I'm such a dork, I uh, have a favorite type of wood glue. Well this is it. This lunchbox down here is my lucky dip, so when I go on a tour I'd empty this out and put anything that I might need, like this, definitely need that, uh, bicycle valve cap back in there. So this can be as empty or as full as I need it to be, but it's basically reserved for parts. So if I'm going on tour and I need potentiometers, output jacks, pickups, or any other small parts, I can put them in here 
That way, if anything predictable on an instrument or even an amp breaks, I've got them all in the one place and they're easily retrieved in a hurry. The last person I was teching for played one of my guitars, so I've got a couple of my guitar parts in there too. Until the next show, all of my crap can stay in there and then after pre-production I'll sort out what needs to go. This plastic bag is full of micro mesh pads and the little micro mesh pad guide there. They're for polishing frets. These are wooden food skewers. They're very cheap, easy to obtain and they're fantastic along with some cyanoacrylate glue for plugging loose strap pin holes and other holes in wood. Buried off deep in this far corner is a container of shellite or what you guys in America call naphtha. It's an alcohol based cleaner, at least that's what I use it for and the alcohol means it flashes off very quickly. I've got a few bags here of zap straps in various sizes as well. So while I'm not going to need most of this stuff during a show, if I do happen to need something I know where everything is even in the dark. These round thingies are Merca Abrilon pads, shout out to Merca because they used to sponsor me and they treated me very nicely. So I use the 1000, 2000, 3000 and 4000 pads and they're fantastic for polishing frets. That's why they're all a little bit dirty. I have to say they don't last very long when you're using them on metal. So if I'm going on a long tour then I'll take a couple of boxes of those with me. This is the base to my Dremel. It basically converts the Dremel motor tool into a portable router or a small scale router. I keep calling my tool a Dremel but it's actually from Ozito. So these little tackle boxes are full of things that I'm pretty likely to need at some point. I've got Allen keys here in various sizes and I have multiples of the same size because they're all actually slightly different sizes. Apart from my little Allen key box, I've got lots and lots of different types of guitar parts. So those are pickup components and there's some of that and a bit of that and some of those. Great stuff. Thanks very much. I'm Jay Vanderwerf. Uh, <laughs> thanks for checking out my video. So in all seriousness, it's not likely that I'd be using any of this stuff during a show, but the next day when I've got some time to do some work, to do some repairs, then that's what this drawer is for. Now let's check out my soldering setup. I've been pretty successful here at keeping everything I need for soldering in its own zone. So I've got one of these eBay crazy expandable collapsible soldering aids and it's got four arms and clips. Great for soldering potentiometers. I've also got a cutting mat hidden down there you can see. That's a dirt cheap eBay soldering iron and it works great. I've got a little plastic bag here of random wires and bits of heat shrink. Everybody needs one of those. Of course I've got some electrical tape here and I'd usually bring different colors of electrical tape too. Inside this cardboard box down here, it's very hard to get to, I've got various colors of wire. This one's a freshie, uh, so clearly I've used up all my old stuff. I go through these boxes quite quickly. I think it's fair to say most of my work is either truss adjustments or wiring. That's because I'll do a lot of one-off tech stuff or repairs when I'm off the road. Some people like cloth covered pushback wire and I do too but I don't include it in my kit unless it's specifically requested. Here's an old guitar string that's handy to solder down as a ground between potentiometers. It's always good to keep some offcuts for that reason. Here's another one. That one is a G string. So let's pack that away. Here I've got some large format heat shrink tubing. I use this for when I'm labeling cables as an outer sheath. I use a portable label maker to print the label. I stick that on the cable and then use this to seal it all together. I've got my favorite wire strippers here and this is a new addition. This is for shrinking the heat shrink tubing. I can aim it exactly where I want to without burning my fingers. There's some spare gas for it. I've got some lovely lightweight wire cutters there. I've got my solder sucker and this is a hemostat. 
which I use for clamping two wires together when I'm soldering them. Also great for connecting a wire to a potentiometer lug. There's my heat shrink and a spare piece of solder. Top left are my alligator clip leads. That's part of my soldering iron setup. And then down here I've got solder and spare tips for the soldering iron. So as you can see, this is one of the larger kits I've got in my setup. And the reason for that is simple. If something's gonna go wrong on an electric guitar or bass, it's probably gonna be wiring first. Top and final drawer. Mounted in this drawer, I have a tuner, which is set up to strobe at all times that it's operational. It's a shallow unit, so it leaves lots of room for activities. Here in the top drawer, I've got my little multi-core of cables that runs my tuner setup, all three tuners. There's also a redundancy zap strapped to it in case of failure. This case here contains my vernier caliper. It's a digital unit, the same one that probably you've seen many times before with the faulty battery compartment. Write to me in the comments if you've got the same one with the same battery compartment issue. I keep a bunch of spare sized drill bits here in these little plastic test tubes and they come in really handy. I've never used the big ones but you never know right so it doesn't hurt to keep them as part of the set. These down here are two little cool tackle boxes. This says Dremel but of course it's for my Ozito, not sponsored. And it's just a few more little bits and bobs that I might need one day, but that I've never needed up to this point. This little tackle box I have used, it's got spare scalpel blades, it's got a few screwdriver extensions, and these hypodermics don't have a sharp end to them, they're completely flat. So they're fantastic for injecting glue into tight spaces. I've also got a couple of card scrapers there, in different shapes as well. This one here is just a pencil case. I should put the compass in it, but I'm too lazy. I've got a stack of boxes here. The top one is holding spare strings and tape for the label maker. These are all single strings. Bulk strings go in the Guitar Tech case. As you can see, I've given it away already. This is my plug tester. I'm gonna show it to you upside down. There we go, and also my cables and its battery. So. A really good rule of thumb is to keep your batteries out of your electronics um, until you're going to use them. So if I'm starting out on a tour, I won't have the batteries in until it's time. And at the end of the tour, I'll take the batteries out. Just like my Dremel, which is an Ozito, this is my Dymo, which is a brother label maker. Does the same job. And like I said before, that's for labeling things like leads. Underneath the tuner here, I've got a big old stack of quad aught steel wool, hidden away so no one can steal it from me. You may be wondering, why does he have a Yamaha THR10 in a drawer? And I'm gonna tell you. It's so, when I'm checking electronics, I've got an audio source. It's also come in handy live when a guitarist has blown an amp but didn't have a contingency. With that situation in mind, I've modified this one. So here I'm plugging it in so both stereo speakers work. And when I remove it, I can plug one of the outputs into an extension cabinet, turning it into a combo. The power adapter for this lives down in drawer number four. So that's my setup as it is today. If this episode's raised any questions for you, drop me a comment below. I answer everybody. That's it for this video. Until the next one, I hope to see you then.